Hey guys, welcome back to Lisa Craft in Priscilla here with another episode of Storycraft. Um, if you guys don't know, if you're just joining me for the first time on the channel, hi, thanks. Uh, thanks for stopping in. What I'm doing today here on Storycraft is uh, telling you guys a story while I make a craft. And uh, right now we're in the middle of our, uh, I'm not going to call it a paranormal theme anymore. I think I'm going to call it a paranormal saga because I'm going to tell um, spooky stories all the way uh, through November 1st. That's what I've decided, and that's what we're doing. So, in light of that, the story I'm doing today is a request from a longtime friend and supporter of the channel, Joy at Witch Mooncraft. Uh, she wants to hear a tale about the Beast of Bodmin Moor, and um, yeah, I'm taking requests. So if there's a spooky story you want to hear, um, even if it's just a concept or something you've heard of, leave it in the comments below, and I will tell it on this channel, because I kind of tell a lot of stories, and I could use some ideas and inspiration on what you guys want to hear. So leave those comments below. You know how the things work. So let's jump into it. So I think this one's going to be fun, because the Beast of Bodmin Moor, you guys, is something I have never heard of. So I had to do a little bit of extra research, because when she sent it to me, I was like, oh yeah, the Beast of Bodmin Moor, totally, yeah, 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 what the fuck is this? And I didn't know. <laughs> So that was one of those things where I was like, wow, you know when your friend sends you stuff and it just stumps you, but you feel like you should know what they're sending you stuff about because you literally asked for it? Um, yeah, that was one of those situations, and I was stumped and um, also confused, but to save face, I said nothing, but oh, okay, thank you, and then I went off to furiously go research, and here we are. So at this point, if you are not from the UK, you probably are like, Priscilla, uh, what does this mean? Because you keep saying Beast of Bodmin Moor, but you're not really explaining it. But I'll tell you guys, something is stalking the English countryside. Like, so much to the point that there is literally a whole page on Wikipedia dedicated alone to the sightings of giant spectral black cats. There's a big cat problem in the UK. And people are seeing them everywhere. And it's wild. And the Beast of Bomb and Moor is one of those things. So, let's start at the beginning. Or the beginning-ish. Or something in the way, way long ago. Which isn't really that long ago, because I was a child, but not an infant. So, I'm not going to exaggerate here. But back in uh, 1995, you know, the 1900s. Um, not bitter about people calling it that at all. Um, but back in 1995, in Cornwall, we get a sighting of the beast by a local woman named Jane Tollard, who witnessed a large, all-black creature with piercing yellow eyes and a slender tail while driving home from her friend's house. Um, she was so shaken up by what she saw that she decided to pull her car over, which is wild to me. Jane, you're in a car. Keep driving. Why would you pull over when there's a beast afoot? I don't know. That's what she did. Um, she pulled her car over and then she watched it disappear into the deep dark woods. Terrifying. Jane, keep freaking driving. Um, the next day she ended up reporting it to the local papers and the police who took absolutely no action whatsoever. Surprisingly. Um, and that's like one of the main accounts or the uh, one of the most well-known sightings of the Beast of Bodmin Moor. So, what are we talking about? Where are we at? Um, we are talking about Northeastern Cornwall, which is actually at the bottom of the UK. I was very confused because I heard Northeastern, thought it was at the top. It's at the bottom. Um, and it's home to Bodmin Moor, which is the center of activity around this infamous beast. Uh, reports of the beast date back to the 18th century and still occur all the way up into the modern present day, like as recently as this year. Um, in the 90s, there was a breakout of attacks on livestock, like, absolutely brutal, like, livestock slayings that were accompanied by this huge uprise in reported sightings. So, there's all these livestock getting attacked, and then all these people reporting seeing this huge beast, um, this large uh, black entity with glowing yellow eyes, um, which led to a renewed interest in the beast, um, which then encouraged even more reports. So, the more people were interested, the more reports came in. That's kind of how these things work. But what is it exactly? Uh, the best answer I can give you guys is nobody knows. Which is very spooky. But not that spooky because it's... I think we all can agree that the Beast of Bodmin Moor is a, a large black cat. But how large? 
So, uh, accounts really do vary on what the beast is exactly. Like, I'm simplifying it by saying it's a cat. The, the, the reports are kind of all over the place, but the most consistent description is a grape cat with um, all black fur, sharp fangs, and glowing yellow eyes. Um, some theories to support this description are that the beast is an escaped wild cat or zoo animal or exotic pet like a panther or a leopard that was re released into the wild when the owner got tired of caring for it, which is a very sad explanation. So I don't like this one because like don't don't get pets if you can't take care of them and don't get exotic pets if you can't take care of them. Um, that's balls. Um, some accounts describe it as a smaller creature, like a fox or an escaped house pet, and some think it's a mix of some kind of hybrid house cat and wild cat, like surviving on its own in the wild. It is important to note that there is a European wild cat, um, which is slightly larger than a domestic cat, but not as large as, like, a panther would be. Like, not even close. <laughs> um, so those do exist in Europe, and, um... I guess this is what they're thinking it's like mixed with but it would be smaller if that was the case and what the sightings are saying is it's much much larger so i don't know how much like credibility to give that thought train um it's it is illegal to own an exotic animal or big cat in the uk um ever since 1976 following the Dangerous and Wild Animals Act, which led to a plethora of exotic pet owners just releasing their pets into the wild. Because fuck the local, like, ecology, right? Like, those nature systems will bounce right back when we release our leopards into that, like, woof, the ecosystem. <laughs> that poor, poor ecosystem. But yes, it led to a plethora of exotic pet owners who released their pets in the wild. Um, so it's not, like, such a huge stretch to believe that if one were to, quote-unquote, have a escaped uh no one would report it so it's, it's very very possible that some of these sightings are of people's exotic pets that were released because they didn't want to get in trouble for having one uh there was a zoo in plymouth which is nearby um that closed in 1998 and it's speculated that three p oh wow i don't think i've ever said that out loud three pumas <laughs> Or if I have, I've never meant to say it while recording. Three pumas were released into the wild as a result of this uh, zoo closing. Although the original owner, Mary Chipperfield, denies that this allegation entirely, none of her animals are released, she says. Um, scientists agree that the likelihood of a hidden population of large cats is really unlikely. Because the size of a sustainable colony, meaning a colony that would continue to like thrive and grow and be present for all this time. Because cats even some of the larger cats only live for like 8 to 13 years we know domestic house cats live longer but these big cats don't live very long especially in the wild um so the size of this colony would need to be quite large in order to be sustainable and to continue on for the history of all these sightings um and any cat colony that size of large cats would cause immediate food scarcity because there's just not enough wildlife in Bodmin Moor to support it. Um, that would cause like eventual die out of the cat colony. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't be sustainable. It wouldn't survive. It wouldn't thrive in that area. Uh, a large cat skull, however, was found by a young boy in the area, which led to a bunch of renewed speculation because the cat skull itself was four by seven inches which is considerably, why is it always so hard? It's considerably larger than domestic cat skulls. Um, you can look at your tiny little kitty head. It is not four inches by seven inches, even though he had butts you like it's four inches by seven inches. Um, that's uh, the purview of larger cats. So this, this skull was found, um, it led to a bunch of renewed interest in the Beast of Bodmin Moor and people claiming that it belonged to the beast and was proof that it existed. Um, they sent this to the Natural History Museum because the uh, finding of this skull became a national headline and the government, just like a week before it's uh, finding the skull, not the government, the boy found the skull, <laughs> a week before the government had actually said that there were um, no possibility of a beast roaming the countryside. They were like, don't worry about it. There's nothing there. And then a week later, this boy finds this skull and everyone was like, lies, <laughs> deception. Um, 
So, <laughs> they sent the skull to the Natural History Museum, which did determine that it was an authentic skull of a young male leopard. However, when they spent some more time investigating it, there was all these signs and evidence to indicate that the skull was from an actual leopard skin rug, which, gross, I didn't know that they kept the skulls in there for animal rugs. That's foul. Um learn something new even if you don't want to every day I guess um, and a lot of details which I'm not going to go into because the practice of making an animal skin rug is upsetting um, but a lot of the details that are involved in that were present and evident on the skull to support the claim that it was part of a rug and for some reason was left outside for somebody to find nobody knows why they couldn't trace it back to anybody Um, and even though, like, in re disregard of the fact that there was so much evidence to support that this skull was just a piece of a rug, um, there's still a bunch of people who claim that this is actually a cover-up and an excuse to sort of hide the fact that there is a beast roaming the countryside. Um, interestingly, and perhaps a bit more spooky... Or a lot more spooky. Um, there's a lot of theories that the Beast of Bodmin Moor isn't actually just a regular cat or a big cat. Um, but it's a ghost or a spectral cat. And I like this so much better. So um, some people speculate that it's a spectral animal. Uh, much on the lines of like a black dog or a black shuck. Like sort of a spooky omen of death type creature. That haunts the can't like the countryside, and that's why it's only seen at night. And they don't know why it mutilates the animals. It's just something that this ghost cat does. Um, others guess that the beast might be some kind of demonic creature that's like escaped from the earth to like terrorize the countryside. Also spooky. Um, I did see one one person mention that it could be aliens, but I didn't see anybody else like support this. So. I don't think this one's aliens, guys. I'm more inclined to believe spooky ghost cat than aliens. But, like, what do I know? I don't, I don't, I'm not that expert. Um, it may also be true, or may not be true, depending on where you stand. Um, but it is a very popular theory that the Beast of Bodmin Moor is actually a werewolf. Like, a werewolf werewolf. Um, and... It's due to the fact that the nature of the attacks on the animals and the, like the livestock were super vicious and just like out of nowhere and they weren't able to find like a local animal responsible. Um, so this sort of rumor, this theory of werewolves like popped up. Um, although it's believed that because of the occurrence of so many big cat sightings, instead of a traditional human to wolf werewolf type like shapeshifter situation, the shapeshifter in question may be human to wear panther or wear leopard. So like shapeshifting into a large cat instead of a large dog, uh, wolf type situation, because there's so many sightings of cat, like a giant cat that it doesn't make sense to suddenly be a wolf. Um, and it would explain how the beast continues to thrive in the environment and evade capture simultaneously. And a shapeshifter wouldn't have to worry about the food scarcity issue or, um, like, responsibility for its actions because nobody would speculate that it would be a shapeshifter, right? So that's a very tidy bow on this situation because it, it wraps up a lot of loose ends. Um, the Ministry of Agriculture, Fishery, and Food which is math. Just going to leave that in the air. Um, took some of these reports pretty seriously and wanted to assess the potential damage to the livestock because, you know, all these cows were being slaughtered um, in the 1990s. So um, they did a study out there. They investigated the situation, checked into the, the rumors in the local legend of the Beast of Bodmin Moor, and they found no evidence of the Beast of Bodmin Moor, but they also noted in the report that there was no evidence of there not being a Beast of Bodmin Moor out there either. So they were like, well, we can't prove that there is a beast, but we also can't prove that there isn't one, which is the kind of like thorough consistency I really appreciate in government reports. They could have just avoided going, but they didn't. They spent money, they went out there, and they said inconclusive, and then they went home. 
There is um, some video footage that came up around 1998 that's been presented to be the Beast of Bogdan Moor, and it features a large black cat, which is about three feet long, and using my eyeball measuring skills, um, about two and a half feet tall, which is fairly larger than your average domestic house cat. Um, it can be found online, and I will link a clip of it uh, below. I'll actually link it with my source because I saw it in the video uh, that this one of the sources I used had so I will link that in the uh, description box of the little video so you can see a little clip of what may potentially be the Beast of Bodmin Moor. I will tell you right now it is very grainy but not as grainy as some other things I've seen like Bigfoot and I believe Bigfoot is real so clear video evidence maybe I believe in the Beast of Bodmin Moor too. Uh, tourism to Bodmin has increased as people flock to the moor trying to catch a glimpse of the beast. And interestingly, if you recall my video on Black Anis, you might remember um, that there was a similar issue of a large black cat uh, being sighted. I will link that video or I'll link the playlist. The playlist will be linked in the description below. So you can check out the Storycraft playlist and you can see the video on Black Anis if you want to hear more about that story. It is also in the UK and also features large spectral black cats. Um, and they were reported in conjunction with the, the myth of Black Anis, which leads me to the conclusion that England definitely has a large black cat problem, which I must investigate in person because kitties. And um, that's all I got for you guys today. This is a little short one, a little shorter video for you guys. Um, I just thought that this subject was very interesting. I've never heard of the Beast of Bodmin more, and I was really excited to share it. More excited when I realized it was a cat. Um, and I just thought it was like a really fun, interesting thing. It never occurred to me that England had such a huge problem of like large spectral cats. That's such an interesting, like, localized phenomenon that there has to be some sort of, like, common denominator to that. Like, that, you know, it's in, like, the cultural unconscious and they all have, like, this thing over there. Or they really have, are, like, being haunted by giant black cats. And that's kind of cool and badass. Um, I wish we had, like, a common thread haunting across America, but we don't because everyone's got to be different for no reason. Um, uh, so maybe I'm a little salty that we don't have, like, one thing we can all agree exists and don't have any proof for, but, I don't know, democracy, I guess? That's a hot take. I'm gonna leave down because it's late, and I'm gonna get canceled before I get anything else. So, that is the end of my story. If you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate your faces. I hope that you enjoyed this tale until I went off the rails. Um... <laughs> And if you have a story you would like to hear, again, like I said in the beginning of the video, you can leave your suggestions, requests in the comments below. And I will catch you guys all in the next one. Until then, happy crafting. Bye!